What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin Hull from Austin Hull Audio and Visual and Make Pop Music, and I am back with another video for you guys. So today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to do more of a sound-alike style tutorial. So I've gotten a lot of questions recently in our Facebook group. That's just the Make Pop group. If you're not in it, go join it. It's completely free. It's fun to hang out. And we get a lot of our video ideas in there. But anyway, I got an idea in there because everybody kind of wanted to see how to create that lead sound from Stupid Deep by John Belly. And they wanted to know how to make that little like distorted flute sound. And it's really simple, so we're gonna dive into that. But since it's so simple and it's not gonna be a super in-depth tutorial, I also wanted to go ahead and throw in the little wubs that they've got in the chorus and the little bass pluck that they've got in the chorus. So we're gonna basically be looking at all of the chorus sound design. The only thing we're not really gonna go over is like the piano in the song because it's literally just piano. I'm not gonna actually go over that. You can just use any kind of piano plugin or natural piano you have and that would be totally fine, but we're really just gonna dive into that lead, that little wub sound, and that bass sound. So it's gonna be super simple, just follow along. We will be using Serum, and I will go ahead and give away all of the presets that I make for free, but don't be afraid to just follow along and make your own presets alongside because you might have something that works for a mix or a production that you're doing a little better than what I've made for this video. So download the presets if you wanna scope through them, feel free to follow along, and let's hop into this. Okay, so now that we're in the session, let's go ahead and actually take a listen to what we're gonna do, just so you can make sure that you're you know, in for a treat and you're getting what you're expecting. So let's just take a a quick little listen and then we'll actually dive in and I'll show you exactly how I did everything and we'll kind of walk through it all. So let's go ahead and let's take a listen to this flute. Let's go ahead and turn off any effects and we will just go one by one on everything that we have done and you can kind of see what I did and why I did it. So let's start out. What we started with was I actually just took a pan flute. So if you're in Serum, um, I will attach just a one-shot sample. Just drag that into your noises folder in Serum and you can pull it up. I'll just call it pan flute. Right in my video, it's just called rendered just because I pulled it from my session. But if you're not using Serum, you can really use any kind of virtual instrument that's gonna have a pan flute. So something like Nexus or Hallian Sonic or Expand, pretty much any synth that's out right now will have a pan flute. Even if you have some like orchestral libraries, those would work as well. There's probably nothing that's not gonna have a flute in it. Anyway, you really just want that pan flute. The key to this song is pitch bend up two, pitch bend down two, and it's really how you play it. So it's gonna be, watch this pitch wheel right here. So it's really just how you play it. That's what gives it that really like spacey, floaty kind of vibe is. And you can kind of see that in the MIDI that we play just to give you uh, another different visual representation. So you can see it right here. So that really is the key to the sound. And then what I did was I dragged the attack up just a little bit so it's not so stabby. Because everything in the song is a little bit more ambient and kind of subdued. So I just dragged it back like 40 or 50 milliseconds is fine just to kind of soften it up so it's not so, you know, right in your face because we are going to distort it later and when we do, if we have a lot of that attack, it's gonna be pretty brutal. So now that that's done, what I did was I just added this analog sign and what I did was I synced it so we're getting some harmonics. That's what it sounds like. Then I put a filter on it and with the filter, what I like doing in Serum is I like actually filtering the key. So now, You just wanna get it to where it sounds good on one key and then it'll kind of just go along with whatever key you're playing, so. I like doing that because it really creates this like nice little tonal element of this resonance because without it, that's where we're really getting that sharpness and we've got it just right under this kind of And it just adds a little bit of body and a little bit of different kind of texture to it just to kind of make it a bit more electronic. So we've got that. 
then we get on to the real sauce, which is where we have the distortion. So I did diode and then I did post just so we're not filtering or we're not distorting a lot of that low end. And then I drug the, the drive pretty high and the mix pretty high. And don't worry, we will tame this in a second with a filter, but now we've got, let me drag it down so it doesn't kill your eardrums. So that's where you're getting a lot of that crushed sound from. Um, so we're just using Distortion Straight and Serum. You can use any distortion you want though. Outside you can use something like Saturn or Spectre or Camel Crusher or Quadrifuzz, whatever is all fine. Let's go ahead and add that filter just so we can get it back up to a normal level. So we've just got the, uh, we've got the Moog Low 6, which is just a, basically a low cut with a 6 dB slope. And then we've got that cutoff right here around like almost 3K Hertz. So here with and without. So that's really giving it that like rounded, warm sound that you're getting in Stupid Deep, where you're still getting a lot of those harmonics from the distortion, but it's a little bit more subdued because you've got this filter on it. So without that, it's just, it's too much. And without the distortion, it just sounds like any old pan flute. It just kind of has like a weird tropical pop vibe. It doesn't really fit in John's song. Um, so then we've got a phaser just to kind of give it a little bit of space. Just to give it a little bit of width, we do the same thing kind of with a chorus. Just to give it that kind of like weird wide texture that he's got on his flute, which is what we're gonna call it, and his mix, um, because you don't want it straight up the middle, but you don't really wanna detune anything because then it gets way too electronic. So we're gonna do something like this. And then we've got this delay, which is just one fourth ping pong filtered out, so we're only getting the mids. And then we've just got a pretty big reverb. And then that's pretty much it for Serum. So it's just that flute that we rendered out, an analog sign with some harmonics, filter out that analog sign so you get that really cool kind of like almost vocal quality to it. And then some uh, distortion, phaser, chorus, delay, reverb, and filter. You can copy the settings if you want. They will be in the preset if you don't want to copy though. Um, I kind of explained why I did everything. So let's just call it good for that on the flute and let's just take a listen. We do one little thing post-processing and that's just slap it in a short room so we can get some more of that like almost slapback delay that he's got going. And then that really just helps add Add that last little bit of depth that you're hearing in his song that has the width, but it's not something that's like detuned or like, you know, you drag the unison up or you use something like a doubler or a chorus uh, and high effect. So we're using a lot of different kind of modulation techniques and kind of spatial processing techniques to add the depth without adding too much of the flavor that any one of those things will add to that element. So I like to stack my stuff that I'm gonna use to widen it so it doesn't get too chorusy or too reverby or too much delay or whatever. When you're stacking, you know, a little bit of chorus, a little bit of room reverb, a little bit of plate reverb, a little bit of ping pong delay, you're gonna get a lot of width, but it's not gonna feel overpowered by any one element. So let's actually hop into the wubs. Now these are probably so much simpler than you would actually think. Let's uh, have the right track selected. So it's just. All it is, is really, it's just a saw wave. Let's go ahead and you know what? We'll just make this one from scratch because it's so easy. It's literally just the initial sound. We'll take it up like seven. And then it is just dragging the cutoff or dragging the attack up so you get that whoom. And then we're gonna drag this down so it's got like that. And then this filter is really what's doing all of the heavy lifting on this. We'll just drag envelope one to the cutoff. We'll drag this down a little bit so it's not super like plucky. So now we've got. So we're getting closer. I'm gonna layer one octave over it, just doing the same kind of thing. Then we can even layer one octave under it, which I didn't do in the preset that I'm downloading, but. I actually don't want that dragged down an octave. 
I don't know, we can leave it like that. It's not really doing much anyway. And then it really was just adding some reverb on it. And that's pretty much it. I'm actually gonna go with a little bit bigger size and a longer decay. Drag the wetness down a little bit. But that's pretty much all that's happening here. And then if you want, you know, you can kind of drag this out. Or you can drag it down a little bit. And just remember that this is gonna control the overall, envelope one is gonna control the overall kind of volume or level. And then it's also going to control this filter because we've dragged it on the cutoff. So without, with, and then if you drag this, so we'll drag it back here because the farther you drag it back, you can see in here, I didn't really quantize or humanize anything because it does take a second for that envelope to kind of kick in. So watch this, you can kind of see. So I like to have everything starting a little bit earlier when I've got these kind of wubby envelopes. That way, by the time that the frequencies are really coming in and you're getting the peak of that sound, um, it is on beat. So the initial is not on beat, but by the time you actually get most of the sound that you're hearing, it's... Because if you drag it back, it's going to sound like it's dragging just a little bit. So that's pretty much all it is for the Wub. It's actually super simple and it's really easy to tailor to your own mix. I use these kind of sounds a lot just because they're really nice for like layering under stuff. So it's literally just drag the attack up a little bit and I like having it a little bit sharper. I don't really like doing a slope like that. I like having more of a ramp like that and then just that's it. So the bass is really simple. It's really just doing something like So really what we're doing right here is we've got this filter that's really pulling a lot of the weight as always in most of my patches. And let's go ahead and turn all of this kind of stuff off. So we've got just this really, really detuned saw wave. And that's why we pull in this envelope. And so we've got envelope one, which is kind of making this general pluck and then envelope two, which is a really hard pluck. So what this is doing with envelope two being such a sharp kind of attack and decay, it's just adding a little bit of that pluck sound. So, so you're really getting some of that high and transient from that saw wave, but it's not giving you too much buzz or too much kind of like, I don't know, too much grit. Cause you don't really want that. You want something a little smoother. You just need a little bit of that attack to kind of give you some, uh, some punch. So we, we've got some analog BD sign right here. Again, just remap so it's adding some harmonics. Envelope one, just making a general pluck. Envelope two, going to this level and this cutoff. And again, that's just kind of giving you even more of a high end pluck. And then we've got some distortion. And we are filtering it out because we don't really want any high end. We just want this like a nice saturated low bass. Then this is where the real magic happens is this compressor. And we can even drag that down a little bit. So we've got the multi-band compressor on. We're doing a lot on the lows, a little bit on the, lot, on the mids, and a lot on the highs. And we've got the gain at like 7.5 dB. Release is at like 90. Attack is at like 90. 4 to 1 ratio, thir minus 13 threshold. Then we've got a little bit of delay. Not a lot, just enough to give a little bit of width. And actually this EQ is not even really doing anything, so we won't even bother turning that on. And that's pretty much the whole bass. And that's pretty much it. So just to kind of recap the bass, we've got a really, really wide saw right here to provide some width so you get that really like detuned Moog style bass. And we've got that envelope too, making sure that the cutoff is pretty sharp. And then we've got envelope two also operating oscillator B, making sure that this is coming down this level. So we're just getting a little bit of that. And 
It's almost got like a little bit of like a mallet effect kind of on it. And then we've just got some clipping for some distortion just to add a little bit of saturation and grit. We've got a compressor just to kind of really boost those low end uh, and high end kind of shimmer that it's got going. So it really tightens up that low end and, and gives a high end a little bit of sparkle. And then we've got that delay just to add a little bit of width. And that's pretty much it for this bass. It's super simple. And then that's pretty much it. So you've just got this lead flute, these wubs, and this bass. And then he's got a piano under that. And then he has like this old style, like vocal kind of, I think it comes from like the OB1 that he's using, which is basically just like an arpeggiated kind of like vocal chop thing that's just doing that dun, 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 dun. But I mean, you can do that with almost any arp that you have. Just log, just throw in, you know, some kind of vocal chop or some kind of little uh, like transient kind of vocal style hit and you'd be good to go. Other than that, this is pretty much the entire course of Stupid Deep with a ton of vocal production on top. And that's it. So Stupid Deep, the sound design is really nothing crazy. Most John Bellion in general is nothing crazy. He uses a lot of organic elements that he really likes to just saturate or filter out or do like weird little bit crushing effects on. So if you're ever listening to John Bellion and it sounds like it's simple, it probably is. It's probably either his voice, some kind of drum machine, or some kind of organic element that's laying around that he wants to sample. And then other than that, he just uses a lot of retro style synths. So I think on this song, they probably use something like the Juno but we just made it in Serum. All we had to do was basically take a detune saw wave and just make that little envelope ramping up with the cutoff. And it's super, super simple. So most of his stuff is pretty minuscule. He goes really wild with vocal production. So if y'all ever want to see a John Bellion style vocal production video, let me know. That would be like a whole big, probably 20 or 30 minute video because especially on this song, there is a freaking ton going on. In terms of the actual synth sound design, it's really nothing super crazy and I'm glad that we got to dive into it just to show you really how simple it is. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more videos like this, let me know what songs or what artists you wanna see me kind of break down and just show you how to do a really quick you know, sound alike to them. That way then you can use that sound in your own productions and you can kind of tailor it to fit your own style. But that's gonna do it for this video. We will be back next time. If you want, definitely go to our website and support us. It's just makepopmusic.com. We've got courses, samples, tutorials, all kinds of stuff like that. We've got blog posts, tons of free and paid content. So we'd love to see you over there. And then if you're not in the group, definitely come join the group. It's just make pop music. It's totally free to join. We love having all of y'all in there. Like I said, we pull it for video ideas and content ideas all the time. So if you really want a big say in it, join the group because that's where we're getting most of our ideas. And then make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe this video. We really appreciate it. And we will be back next time. Much love, make pop music. Peace out.